This is another relative motion problem where we have a circular path. So let's go over this one and see how we work it out. All right, it says cars A and B are traveling around the circular racetrack, and then at the instant shown, A has a speed of 90. So let's write that down. That's feet per second. And is increasing its speed at a rate of 15 feet per second squared. Now B, it says over here, has a speed of 105 feet per second and is decreasing its speed at 25 feet per second squared. Now if it's decreasing, let's make that negative so we know it's going in the opposite direction as the velocity. Now we want to find the relative velocity and acceleration of A with respect to B. Okay, so, and we're going to find the magnitude. So we're going to do VA over B, that's what we're looking for, and then acceleration of A over B. All right, so that means this is A with respect to B. All right, so let's go ahead and let's look at velocity first, and let's write out our vector equation, because I'm going to have to get a vector to take the magnitude. So we're going to have velocity of A equals velocity of B plus velocity of A relative to B. Again, this is just from a vector triangle, uh, so that's just your general equation. Variable on the left here should be the one on top. Remember, this is A relative to B, so the one you're looking at is the one on the left. Let's go ahead and get these two velocity vectors and see um, what we need to do after that. Before we do that, let's draw a little picture here so we know where everything is. So this is x, this is y. Let's look at a. So a is here going to the left. And notice that is horizontal there, that va. So here is va. And that is going to be 90 feet per second. Okay, so looking at that, our vector, since we're going in the left direction, um, va is going to be negative 90i. And then units here, feet per second. Y'all know I'm bad about units. Now VB is over here. All right, so let's do a separate little frame for VB. It's Y and this will be B. Okay, now this one is going up at an angle, right? We got this 60 degrees. So let's look at how to draw that. So let's just say this is over here. And that will be 105 feet per second. Okay, And our angle right here would be 60 degrees. Okay. Alright, so now we've got that. Let's go ahead and find our vector. Okay, so VB, we're going to the left, so we're going to have a negative I component. It's going to be 105 cosine 60, because that's the adjacent side to that angle. So negative 105 cosine 60, I. The Y component will be positive, because we're going up, and the Y here is opposite the angle. So we're going to have sine 60, so we'll have plus 105 sine 60, J. Now if we calculate that, what do we get? Negative 52.5i plus 90.93j. Right, and that'll be feet per second squared. Now we've got this, we've got this, we can find the relative term. So for the relative term, we just need to do VA minus VB. Okay, and then that's going to give us a vector. So if we do this, we need to, you know, subtract the like terms. So take your i's, subtract those. So we're going to have negative 90 minus a negative 52.5. Those are your i terms. And then for j, you know, we don't have anything here. So we're just going to have the plus 90.93j. And then that will equal negative 37.5i plus 90.93j. And that would be feet per second squared. And this is, oh, why am I thinking? These are feet per second, not per second squared. I'm thinking acceleration. All right. 
Now let's go ahead and find the magnitude because this is the vector. So if I want the magnitude, we just do the square root of the sum of the squares. Okay, so square each of those components, add them together, and then take the square root of that sum. And we're going to get 98.36 feet per second. Now, a lot of the times if you're given a magnitude, you want to put the direction angle also. So let's do that. Let's kind of draw this out. All right, so here's just our Cartesian frame. I have a negative x component, and then I have a larger positive y. That means we can draw this kind of up like that. Get the 98.36. And then I'll just find this angle theta right here. Okay, so theta, if we look, we can draw a right triangle, right? And if we do that, the magnitude is the 98.36, but that's made up of these components here. So we've got 90.93 over here, and then the x component would be 37.5, and then I'm going to find that angle theta. So we would have the arc tangent of 90.93 over 37.5. The negative sign here doesn't matter because I already know what quadrant I'm in. And that gives us 67.59 degrees. Okay. That takes care of velocity. Now we're going to do acceleration. Okay. Now with acceleration, you have to pay attention to the path, right? So we have a circular path, so that means each of these cars has two components of acceleration. We've got a tangential acceleration, and then we have a normal acceleration. The tangential acceleration is just basically the acceleration or deceleration of the cars you know, themselves. The normal acceleration is due to the path, that curvature that we have in the road. Right? That's what's going to bring about that normal acceleration. So we have to calculate both of those terms. All right, so let's get started here. We're looking for this relative term. So acceleration of A equals acceleration of B plus acceleration of A relative to B. Let's go ahead and find acceleration of A. Now remember, it's on this curved path, right? So we have a tangential term and a normal term. So we have an A tangential plus an A normal. And we got to find both of those. Okay. So to do that, let's draw this little frame. And then let's put our information on here. Okay, we already looked at V. V was going this way to the left. And we were told it was accelerating a 15 feet per second squared. So if it's increasing at speed, which it is, then that means our um, acceleration here of 15 is going to be on that x-axis going to the left. Okay, So that is your tangential term. Okay, Because that 15 feet per second squared is just the acceleration of the car itself right? without considering the path. So we've got that. Let's figure out what that is in vector form and then we'll find the normal. Right, so the tangential term, notice it's right on the x-axis, pointing to the left, so it's going to be negative 15i. And that's feet per second squared. Now we've got to do the normal acceleration. Now remember, the normal acceleration is always directed towards the center of curvature. Okay, So for this case, it's going to be going down like this. So that's going to be that normal. And remember the magnitude there would be v squared over rho. Okay. So I want to write this in vector form. Okay, So here's the magnitude. It's pointing down, so it's going to be negative v squared over rho. So the v would be the velocity of a, which was 90. Square that. And then the radius of curvature is given right there is 300. Okay. 
and then the unit vector there would be j because we're on that y-axis. And that simplifies to negative 27j. So we can put this together to get acceleration of a. Um, so normally you group your like terms, but this one has i and this has j. So we'll just have negative 15i minus 27j feet per second squared. All right. Now we've got to do b. So b is here. Notice b is closer to the left side of the road here. That distance radius here is 250. It's smaller because um, it's not on the outer edge like a was. So let's look at that one. And acceleration of b, it's got a tangential term and a normal term, right? Because it's decelerating, that's going to be our tangential term. And then it's on a curved path, so it's got the normal. So let's say a for b is a tangential b plus a normal for b. And let's draw this out so we can see the vector a little bit easier. All right. So we know vb was going this way, right? And it was slowing down at a rate of 25. All right. So I'm going to put velocity here just so we can see. So your tangential acceleration should be, you know, in the same direction or in the opposite direction of your velocity. Since we are slowing down here, our acceleration term is going to go down that way. Right, and that's 60 degrees there. Okay, so let's go ahead and find ATB. Put it in vector form. Again, this is X, this is Y. All right, so let's um, see what we got here. So we're down in this quadrant, which is positive X. So we're going to have ATB cosine 60, right? And the ATB is going to be 25. I don't need the negative on here because I already drew it going the opposite direction as VB. Okay, so we're going to have 25 cosine 60i. This is going down, so we're going to have negative 25 sine 60j. And let's simplify that. It's 12.5i minus 21.65j feet per second squared. Now let's do the velocity, or not the velocity, let's do the normal acceleration. So the normal acceleration, if we're looking at B, remember it goes in towards the center of curvature. So it's going to be going along this line here. So this will be ABN. This angle is 60. And remember the magnitude is V squared over rho. Now notice I've got a different V here, right? This is 105, rho is going to be 250. So let's put that up here. So V is 105, square that, put it over rho, which is 250. And then let's find the unit vector. So here we're going to the left, so negative I. So we're going to have negative, uh, we need sine 60, I. It's going down, so that's negative, cosine 60, j. All right, so now I got that j term there. Simplify, we get negative 38.19i minus 22.05j. And then we group them up here. So we want to add the like terms. All right, so we're going to add these together and then these together. Right, so 12.5 minus 38.19i plus negative 21.65 um, plus that negative uh, 2205. Those will be j. All right, simplify that. We're almost done, y'all. Negative 25.69i minus 43.7j. Okay, I got this, we got this. Now I can solve for that relative term. And this is gonna give us the vector. Um, now
Now remember we're going to have acceleration of A minus acceleration of B when we solve for that relative term. And then we need to group up our terms. Okay, so here's this vector and then here's this one. So we have negative 15. Now notice this is minus, right? So we're going to have minus that negative 25.69. So that's going to be a positive. And then we have negative 27 minus from right here a negative 43.7. So those become positive, and that's J. Now, simplify, we get 10.69i plus 16.7j feet per second squared. So this is our relative acceleration vector of A relative to B. Okay, we want to find the magnitude, though. So let's take the square root. We'll square the two terms. And then add them up, do the square root, giving us 19.83 feet per second squared. And then last thing, just to round everything out, would be to do the direction angle. Let's draw it over here. Let's figure out what quadrant we're in. Positive x, positive y, that means we are over here. It's got more of a y component than an x, so it kind of is going to go up a little bit closer to the y-axis. Magnitude there is 19.83. Let's find theta. Theta would be the arc tangent of the y component. So 16.7 over the x component, 10.69. That is 57.4 degrees. All right, so now you have it. And the point of showing this direction angle with a magnitude is then if you had this picture, right, if you knew what angle we're talking about and the magnitude, you could go ahead and get the acceleration vector, okay? So you could get back to this. That's the purpose of, of having those two together. That way you can get the vector form if you needed it. All right, see you guys next time. Y'all have a good night.